Okay, Krishna. So yesterday we started with 18th chapter, conclusion the perfection of renunciation. So there we saw that Arjuna asked the question, you know, I want to understand what is the purpose of renunciation, Tyaga, of the renounced order of life, Sanyasa. What is the difference? O killer of Kesidavan, master of the senses. So Arjuna is requesting to Krishna to explain what is Tyaga and what is renunciation, what is the purpose. So then Krishna started answering that giving up of activities that are based on material desire is what the great learned men call renounced order of life. So this is, okay. And giving up the result of all activities is what the wise call renunciation. Means in Tyag, you are giving up the result of the activity. In the renunciation, you are giving up the activities which are based on mat sense, material desire. So you are giving up those activities in that. Of course, yeah. So, so in the uh, Tyaga, you are giving up the result of both Kamya Karma and Nitya Karma. There are two kinds of Karma. Kamya Karma, Nitya Karma. Kamya Karma means the whatever based on your desire. You want some want to do some activity to fulfill the desire your desire. Nitya karma means duties which are assigned to you. So in the renunciation, in renun renounce order of life, one person give up the Kamya Karma. You just perform Nitya Karma. There is in Tyag, whatever you do, but you will give up the result of the activity to Krishna. That is the difference. Okay. He says some, some learned men declare that all kind of fruitive activities should be given up as faulty. Yet others maintain that act of sacrifice, charity, penance should never be abandoned. Means two opinions. So here Krishna is telling some people are saying that you should give up giving up, you should give up fruitive activities, considering it as a faulty. Others say you should not give up the activities like sacrifice, charity, penance. So now that is the opinion of two different people, different kind of people. But Arjuna is telling here, based of the Bharata, sorry, Krishna is telling to Arjuna, so based of Bharata, hear my judgment about renunciation. Now Krishna is giving the judgment. I don't know what others are saying. But Krishna is giving the judgment about renunciation. Oh, among the men, renunciation is declared in the scripture to be three kind. So he said, that's Krishna is telling, hear my judgment based on Shastra. So he said, first he's telling that an act of sacrifice, charity, penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. So you should not give, give up sacrifice, charity, penance. So should we discuss about that in detail? So I'm not going into detail right now. He said, indeed, this sacrifice, charity and penance purify one the great souls. So when you perform this kind of activities which are recommended in Veda as per your orders of life, one and ashram, it will purify you. In the sense we cannot be without performing any activity. We have to do some activity. That's what is mentioned in 3.5. That uh, not a not for not for a not even for a moment we can remain without activity. So we have to do some activity. So what kind of activity which should be based on our Vana and Ashram should be done by giving up the reason. That, that is what is said in the next verse that all these activities should be performed without attachment or any expectation of result. They should be performed as a matter of duty. Osana Prutha, that is my final opinion. That is the Krishna's opinion. That should be done as a duty, not with the expectation of result. Okay. So now Krishna explained, uh, no, renunciation in different modes, ignorance, patience, and goodness. So he says that prescribed duty should never be renounced. If one give up his prescribed duty because of illusion, such a renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. So this renunciation in the mode of ignorance. He said anyone who give up the prescribed duty as a troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of fashion. Such action never leads to elevation of renunciation. So 
that is not the purpose of renunciation right it will not help you to advance now he said oh, arjuna when one perform is prescribed duty only because it is ought to be done as a matter of duty he does renounce all material association in all attachment to the fruit is renunciation is said to be in the mode of goodness whatever activity do it for krishna offer that result for krishna okay so he gave up kamya karma result of even karma 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 and whatever nitya karma is doing the result of that nitya karma will also offer to krishna so that is one thing so now in the next thing in the mode of in the next verse krishna explain the symptoms of the sanyas in the mode of goodness renouncer in the mode of goodness he says the intelligent renouncer situated in the mode of goodness neither hateful of inauspicious work or attached to inauspicious work has no doubts about work okay? has no doubts about work he said it is indeed impossible for a embodied being to give up all activities so why he says he has to do work he cannot give up the work that we already discussed but he who renounces the fruit of action is called one who has truly renounced that is one part for one who is not renounced if he doesn't renounce he is not in the mentality of renounce so now we are talking about renounce the result of activity so if we are not in that spirit then what will happen the three four fruit of action desirable undesirable and mix accrue after death so you will be bound bound will be bound by bound by the result of the uh, karmic reaction but those who are in the renounce order of life have no such a result to suffer or enjoy so we have to give up the result if we don't do in the spirit of renounce renunciation then we'll be suffering by the bondage of karma okay so now now the question comes that any activity do in renounce order also we have to do some activity we definitely we have to you know and no karma is without any reaction so what about this so to understand this part krishna is telling that you no know, to accomplish karma you have to understand that there are other factor also affects the action you are performing you are not the only doer that is that is what he is trying to tell is going to say here for oh, my dear arjuna according to the vedanta there are five causes for accomplishment of all action now learn of this from me and he says in the next verse that the place of action body the performer the various senses the many different kind of endeavor ultimately the super soul these are the five factors of action so place of action means body we already discussed about that what is setra okay the performer setra gya or maybe karta you can say the various senses which is also again the body okay the uh, 10 senses including 11 senses including mind different kind of end is also required ultimately the super soul so if you see here there are three personalities in what one is soul super soul and material nature so soul is initiator super super soul is sanctioner and material nature is facilitator so performer initiate super soul sanction then the material nature like you know which which is for the place of action then different kind of endeavors and the senses they are part of material nature right so basically three things are there again so that's what he said that uh, he says that you have to understand not to be bound by the karmic reaction you have to understand that whatever right or wrong action a man perform by body mind or speech is caused by these five factors these are the this involves everything soul is initiator super soul is sanctioner and material nature who is facilitator okay so yahan pe bol raha hai therefore one who thinks himself the only doer not considering the five factor is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are so earlier 
Krishna said that you should renounce the result of your activity. Now, Krishna is telling that you should also renounce the mentality of doer. That spirit should be there. That karta mentality, doership mentality should be given up. That is another level he said. Okay. So if we give up that, then what will happen? That we will not be able to see the things in the right perspective. So we will not have understanding of uh, this uh, matter, spirit and super soul. How they are acting will not, will not be considered in the knowledge of these things. Knowledge means knowledge of matter, spirit and super soul and the relationship. That is very, very, very important. So we are not in that, we don't see in that perspective. If we are in the doership mood, then we will not be able to see in the, that perspective of you know, difference between soul, super soul and material nature and the relationship. Okay. So one who is not motivated by false ego, false ego means I am the engineer, I am the controller, I am the Iswara, I am the Bhokta. So if one is not motivated by that false ego and his intelligence is not entangled, though he kills a man in this world, does not kill nor is bound by his action. So you're not, so if he's in that mode, means he's doing out of duty, then he'll, he'll not bound by the actions. That's what Krishna is telling. So and to understand this thing, you have to understand that one more part that even to do activity, you need some motivation. Okay. And there should be, when you are doing activity, so many things are involved. One that you need motivation, you need instrument to perform activities. So that's what Krishna is telling. That knowledge, the object of knowledge, the knower are three factors that motivate action. So we were. We completed yesterday till verse number 17. So we were here on verse number 18. So Krishna says here, we'll start from here today. Jnanam gneya parigyata trividha karma chodana karanam karma karteti trividhi karma sangraha to bolte hai. Knowledge, the object of knowledge and knower are the three factors that motivate action. So when you will be motivated, you have proper understanding of the things. If you don't have proper knowledge, you will be always confused. You will not feel motivated. So knowledge hona chahiye, proper knowledge, object of knowledge, goal should be clear. And if these two things are there, then the knower will come in picture. This is one part. This is for motivation. But just having motivation is not sufficient. You should have instrument to execute the action. So for instrument, he says, this, you'll execute the activities through senses. And you know, you do some activities, so the work should be there. And the, the doer, so basically, are the three constituent of actions. So they are like, you know, they forms whole activity. Basically, two things here, parigyata and karta. Both are same, if you see. But their mood is different. One is knower, and the other is in doership mental. One is doing. So that way, they are same, but they are different in terms of mood. That one is in the executive mode, and one is in the Krishna is telling. So even you cannot do activity without knowledge, okay, without senses, and work itself. The, there should be a clear objective of object of knowledge. Okay. Now, if you see that knowledge, this all. Knowledge can also be different kind. Knowledge in relation to sense gratification, knowledge in relation to soul, or maybe mayavadi knowledge. So different, different kind of knowledge are there. Action may be also different kind of thing. So Krishna is telling in the next verse that even this knowledge, object of knowledge, okay, senses, all those things, also come under the mode of material nature. You will not be free. So he says, Jnanam karma cha karta cha trivide guna bhedata prochete guna sankhyane yatha vajshunuta anyapi According to three modes of material nature, there are three kinds of knowledge, action and performer of action. Knowledge, action and performer of action. Living entity is always under the 
sorry not always but in the material mode the condition soul is always under three modes of material nature so they are bound by they are affected by three modes that's what krishna is telling here okay so now in the next verse he describe everyone differently so he says in sarvabhute suya nekam bhavam avyayam ikshate avibhaktam vibhaktesu tad gyanam vidhi satvikam to bol rahe hai that knowledge by which one un, one undivided spiritual nature is seen in all living entity though they are divided into innumerable form you should understand to be in the mode of goodness basically in the mode of goodness knowledge in the mode of goodness means your proper understanding that living entity are of same nature means sachid ananda all the living entity are sachid ananda same nature they are part and parcel of the supreme lord so that understanding is there okay so if you sit if you want to take broader understanding then again you know, that the knowledge real knowledge means the knowledge of matter spirit and controller of both so that knowledge is considered in the mode of goodness so here we are talking about living entity the nature of the living entity is sachidananda same nature and they are part and parcel of the supreme lord so they are servant of the lord so if we are seeing that perspective then our knowledge is that knowledge is considered in the mode of goodness that's what he said in the purport of person who see one spirit soul in every living being whether a demigod human being animal bird beast aquatic or plant possesses knowledge in the mode of goodness all living entity one spirit soul is there although they have different bodies in terms of their previous birth so that is about as described in chapter 7 manifestation of living force in everybody is due to superior nature of the supreme lord thus to see that one superior nature that living force in everybody is to see in the mode of goodness that living energy is imperceivable although the bodies are perceivable so difference are perceived in terms of body because there are many forms of material existence in the condition life self realization okay let's see the nature here quality qualitatively we are seeing okay so now in the next word krishna talk about knowledge in the mode of passion so he says prithakvena tu yad gyanam nana bhavan prithakvidan vetti sarve suputesu tad gyanam vitti rajasam that knowledge by which one see that in every different body there is different type of living entity you should understand to be in the mode of passion there are some class of people they no that you know we are not this body we are soul but they have, have different understanding soul will also consciousness will also destroy after, after the destruction of body so these are one category of people someone say after you die after liberation you will merge with the supreme soul you will become god that is another class of thing that's what proper talk you know so according to such a knowledge okay you can read whole purport the concept of that material body is living entity and with the destruction of the body the consciousness is also destroys for knowledge in the mode of passion according to that knowledge body differ from one another because of development of different type of consciousness otherwise there is no separate soul which manifest consciousness body is itself the soul there is no separate soul beyond the body that is understanding so according to such a knowledge consciousness is temporary or false or else there are no individual souls but there is all pervading soul which is full of knowledge and this body is manifestation of temporary ignorance okay. so they deny the existence of individuality or beyond this body there is no special individual or supreme soul so body itself is soul okay. all such concepts are not considered the product of mode of passion now in the next verse krishna explain knowledge in tamagun so it says yattu krishnam yattu krishna vad ekasmin 
कार्ये सक्तम अहेतुकम अतत्व अर्थ पद अल्पम च तत्तामसम उपदारता and that knowledge by which one is attached to one kind of work as the all in all without knowledge of the truth which is very meager is said to be in the mode of darkness so basically this is knowledge in relation to sense gratification okay so that should is explain the knowledge of the darkness or ignorance because every living entity in the conditioned life is born into mode of ignorance okay one who does not develop knowledge through authority is a scriptural injection as knowledge that is limited to the body basically in this the knowledge man is not based on the shastra is not concerned about acting in terms of direction of the scripture for him god is money knowledge means satisfaction of the bodily demands such a knowledge has no connection with absolute truth this material knowledge it is more or less like a knowledge of ordinary animal the knowledge of eating sleeping depending meeting okay and such a knowledge is described here as the product of mode of darkness in other words knowledge concerning the spirit soul beyond this body is called knowledge in the mode of goodness basically hmm. Hmm. in the other word knowledge concerning the spirit soul beyond this body is called knowledge in the mode of goodness yes in summary okay krishna is telling hmm. in other words knowledge concerning the spiritual beyond this body is called knowledge in the mode of goodness knowledge producing many theories and doctrines but due to mundane logic and mental speculation is the product of the mode of fashion and the knowledge concerned only with the keeping the body comfortable is said to be in the mode of ignorance so in regard to that second mode of fashion knowledge producing many theories and doctrine by the dint of mundane logic and mental speculation is the product of mode of fashion it's very simple to understand if you read the purport of 2.56 sisti tirmuni ruchyate so sisti means he has reached the conclusion he has reached to the conclusive truth he have found out what is truth so there is no more speculation is required no more concoction is required no more logic is required he has understood everything very simple to understand so the muni means he give different different logic argument speculation and all so if, if he has reached to absolute truth conclusive truth then he doesn't require any mental concoction or anything so if he has not reached still you know his knowledge is improper or maybe you can see incomplete and maybe wrong okay then that is the sorry i should not incomplete but wrong understanding and that is called knowledge in the mode of patient so the next he says work in different niyatam sangarahi tam arag tvesata krutam aphala prepsuna karma उट लवर So basically, it is these are the symptoms of sthit pragya person. He doesn't sukhe so anubhi ke mana, dukhe so vigata spruha, vitra aga bhay kuro da sridhir muni ruchye the. In we had already discussed this in two point fifty six. Again, same thing. So that kind of work, if he is doing with that mood, work, okay. so that kind of action is in the mode of goodness okay so regulate uh, just like that is regulated occupational duty as prescribed in the scripture prescribed duty means prana duty as per the prana sram dharma okay so perform uh, du- duties performing prana sram dharma without attachment or proprietary rights and therefore without any love or hatred and performed in krishna consciousness 
to brain without self satisfaction or self gratification are called action in mode of goodness basically you are giving the karma phala action you are doing just for pleasing the supreme lord and for your sense gratification so that kind of action is called in the mode of goodness next he explain yatu kame suna karma sahang karan va punha kriyate bahula yasam tat rajas सम उदाहरता तो बोल रहे हैं पर एक्शन परफॉर्म विद ग्रेट एफर्ट बाय वन सीकिंग टू ग्रेटिफाई इट्स डिजायर एंड एनेक्टेड फ्रॉम द सेंस ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो इज कॉल्ड एक्शन इन द मोड ऑफ पैशन वेरी सिंपल मींस यू वांट सम रिजल्ट यू वांट टू ग्रेटिफाई योर सेंसेस एंड यू हैव अगेन फॉल्स ईगो मींस योर डूअर्स ऑफ मेंटालिटी एंड भोक्ता मेंटालिटी फॉल्स ईगो मींस यू कंसीडर योरसेल्फ कर्ता एंड एंजॉयर डूअर एंड एंजॉयर कंट्रोलर एंड एंजॉयर So if you do with that mentality, then uh, that kind of action which is done that way, that is called in the mode of patient. Okay. So it's very simple to understand. In the next verse, he says, "Anubandham kshaya himsam an ekshya chaporusam mohad arabte karma yatatam samuchyate." तो बोलते हैं यहाँ पर भगवान बता रहे हैं that action performed in illusion in this regard of scriptural injection and without concern of future bondage or for violence or distress cause to other is said to be in the mode of ignorance very simple to understand this is vikar this is not mentioned in the shastra you are doing whimsically so this kind of action are in the mode of ignorance so one has to give the account of one's action to the state or agent of supreme lord called yamduta okay so irresponsible work is destructive because it is destroy the regulative principle of scriptural injection or it is often based on the violence and is distressing to other living entity such a irresponsible work is carried out in the light of one's personal experience this is called illusion and such a illusory work is produced of the mode of ignorance or if i summarize all three action mode of goodness passion and ignorance and again worker karta in the mode of uh, goodness passion and ignorance which will come in the next verse so it's like a citizen good citizen and criminal सिटीजन मीन्स अरे अपना काम किया पैसा कमाए ईमानदारी गुड सिटीजन मीन्स दे डू समथिंग फॉर अदर्स सेल्फलेसली विदाउट एक्सपेक्टिंग द रिजल्ट एंड क्रिमिनल मीन्स दे क्रिएट द ट्रबल फॉर अदर्स फॉर फॉर कंट्री सो दैट आई कैन अप्लाई फॉर एक्शन इन गुडनेस इज लाइक अ गुड सिटीजन फॉर karta in the goodness is like a good citizen karta in mode of passion is or maybe action in the mode of passion you can differentiate then that is come in like citizen apna kiya apna enjoy kiya theek hai dusro ko nuksan mat karo dusre ke liye kuch mat karo theek hai that's fine and the criminal okay they are considered themselves enjoyer and karta they disregard the state law country law Act whimsically and they will be punished. Okay, so that's the point. So now let's come to now. Next he says. Now there Krishna is going to talk about karta. But the bhukta sango anahan vadi dhrutu yutsa ham samanvita siddhi a siddhayor. निर्विकार करता सात्विक उच्चते भगवान यहाँ पे लॉर्ड इज टेलिंग यर वन हु परफॉर्म इज ड्यूटी विदाउट एसोसिएशन विद मोड ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर विदाउट फॉल्स ईगो विथ ग्रेट डिटर्मिनेशन एंड एंथुजियाजम विदाउट वेवरिंग सक्सेस और फेलियर इट शेड टू बी वर्कर इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस इट्स वेरी सिंपल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट डजेंट एव फॉल्स ईगो यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट आई एम ओनली आई एम नॉट द ओनली डूअर Okay, he gives the result to 
offer his the result of his activity to Lord Krishna. So if he is offering the result of his activity to Krishna, then definitely he will not be bound by the three modes of material nature. And he will, since he is not working for result, then definitely he will not be disturbed by wavered by the success or failure. Okay, and if he is doing for a good higher cause, then definitely he will perform with determination and enthusiasm. Okay, so you can read the purport. Person in Krishna consciousness is always transcendental to material mode of nature. He has no expectation for the result of the work entrusted to him because he is above false ego and pride. Still, he is always enthusiastic in the completion of such a work. He does not worry about the distress undertaken. He is always enthusiastic. He does not care for success or failure. He is equal in both distress and happiness. Such a worker is situated in the mode of goodness. Hope it is very simple, clear. So in the next verse, Krishna talk about worker in the mode of patient. He says, Ragi karma phala prepshur lubdo hinsa atma ko asuchi harsa sokan vitha karta raja saha parikirti ta to bol raha the worker who is attached to work, the fruit of work, when she is attached. So what is the difference between Nishkam Karma Yoga and Siddha Bhakti? Nishkam Karma Yoga, you are attached to one activity. And where you, know, you do that for Krishna, offer the result of that activity to Krishna. Okay. In Siddha Bhakti, because you are attached to Krishna, you are ready to do any activity. So that's the difference. So now here, what is that? In the previous one, he was not attached to the result of the activity. But here, he is attached to work and also with fruits of work. And he considered himself desire, enjoyer of the fruit. He was greedy, always envious, impure, motivated by joy and sorrow, is said to be in the mode of passion. Okay. Since he is considered his enjoyer, so Definitely he'll have enviousness and he'll be so, joy and sorrow because he may not will not always get the desired result. So Prabhupada writes in the per quote, a person is too much attached to certain kind of work or the result because he has too much attachment for materialism or hearth and home, wife and children. Such a person has no desire for higher elevation in life. That's what Krishna said in 2.44 Bhogyareswari Prasaktanam Taya Pahad Chetasa Vyasetmika Buddha Samadho Navityate. Those who are too much attached for sense gratification, it is very, very difficult for them to attain Samadhi Bhakti. It's very, very difficult. He is simply concerned with making the world as a material, as materially comfortable as possible. He is generally very greedy. He thinks that anything attained by him is permanent and never to be lost. Such a person is envious of other and prepared to do anything wrong. Because he wants to enjoy definitely live and we if other people get higher, better things. Therefore, such a person is unclean and he is does not care whether his earning is pure or impure. He is very happy if his work is successful and very much distressed when his work is not successful. Such is the worker in the mode of Kulna. Patient. So, hope it is clear. Let's go to next verse. So, then, you know, Krishna says, Ayukta Prakruta Stabda Satone Skruti Ko Kuti Ko Alasa Visadi Tirka Sutricha Karta Tamasa Uchate. So, worker who is always engaged in work against the injection of the scripture, who is materialistic, obstinate, cheating, expert in insulting others, who is lazy, always morose, procrastinating, is said to be worker in the mode of ignorance. So, like, you know, in scriptural injection, we find what sort of 
work should be performed and what sort of work should not be performed. Okay. Those who do not care for those injections engage in the work not to be done. Such person are generally materialistic. Ugra karma or karma. They work according to the mode of nature, not according to the injection of the scripture. So they will be directly dictated by modes. Okay. They will not regulate their activity. They will work against the scripture. Such a worker are not very gentle and generally they are always cunning and expert in insulting others. They are very lazy even though they have some duty, they do not do properly and they put it aside to be done later on. So they procrastinate. Therefore, they appear to be morose. They procrastinate anything which can be done in the hour to drag on for years. Such a worker are situated in the mode of ignorance. Okay. So now Krishna has explained till now, now knowledge in the mode of goodness, patience, and ignorance, action in three different modes, uh, doer in three different modes. Now he's switching to other topic. He says, Buddhir Bhedam Trutes Cheva. Guna Tastri Vidam Shunu Prochamanam Ase Sena Prutakvena Dhananjaya Tapulre. O winner of the wealth, now please listen as I, I'll tell you in detail of different kind of understanding, determination according to three modes of material nature. So, so next verse he says. Prorutimcha nivrutimcha karyo karye bhaya bhaye bandha moksham chaya vetti buddhir sa partha sattvi ki to bata rahe O son of Prutha, that understanding by which one know what ought to be done, what ought not to be done, what is to be feared and what is not to be feared, what is binding, what is liberating. In the mode of goodness, very simple to understand. Basically, this kind of people act based on sastra. They don't disregard the injection of the sastra. They act for the uh, this kind of intelligent people. They act for pleasing the Krishna. Basically, they do that kind of activity, which is mentioned in the sastra. So, basically, performing action in terms of direction of the scripture is called pravruti. Executing the action that deserve to be performed and action which are not so directed are not to be performed one who does not know the scriptural direction become entangled in the action and reaction of the work okay. that's what krishna says in 4.616 that kim karma kima karmeti what should be done what should not be done kaoyo pyatra mohita even great personality intelligent people also get bewildered so then what he says, Tatate Karma Prakshami. That's why Krishna is telling that he will tell us what should be done and what should not be done. And by knowing that thing, you will be free from bondage. Yeah. So, the action and reaction of birth, then we have to act what Krishna has directed us to do. So understanding which discriminate by understanding which discriminates by intelligence is situated in the mode of goodness. In the next verse he says, dharmam adharmam cha karya cha akaryam ayathavat praja nati buddhi sa partha rajasi to bolre osana prutha that understanding which cannot between action that should be done and action that should not be done is in the mode of patient very clear means they are not means they are not yet clear what should be done what should not be done they don't have clear understanding clear knowledge about matter spirit. So without the proper knowledge of matter spirit and control are both they cannot take a decision since they have insufficient knowledge or incomplete knowledge or they don't have 
proper understanding of everything. That's why they cannot, they will not be able to take proper decision. Okay, and that kind of intelligence is the mode of patience. In the next verse, Krishna says, Adharmam adharmam itiya manyate tamasavrita sarva arthan vipari taksha tamsha buddhi sapartha tamasi that understanding which consider irreligion to be religion religion to be irreligion under the spell of illusion and darkness and strive always in wrong direction o prutha is in the mode of ignorance so adharma ko dharma man lete hain dharma ko adharma mante hain they are doing under illusion and darkness just like terrorists or whatever I don't want to go in that detail, but uh, and intelligence in the mode of goodness is you clearly know what is religion, what should be done, what should not be done. In mode of patient, you don't have clear understanding what should not be done and what should be done. Here, it's completely reversed. What you consider what should be done as a that should not be done, and what should not be done as a what that should be done. It's a reverse. So basically they work intelligent in the mode of ignorance, always working the opposite of the way it should be. To accept a religion which are not actually religion and reject actual religion. So men in ignorance understand a great soul to be common men and accept common men as a great soul. They think truth to be untruth, accept untruth as a truth. In all activities, they simply take the wrong path. Therefore, their intelligence is in the mode of ignorance. So in the next verse, he says, Dhrutaya ayaya dhariyate mana prana indriya kriya yogena avya bicharinya dhruti sa partha sattvi ki dhruti means determination. Okay. So sana prutha, that determination which is unbreakable, which is sustained with yoga practice and which does control the is determination the mode of goodness. So, okay. so yoga means to understand the supreme soul, one who is steadily fixed in the supreme soul with determination, concentrating one's mind, life, and sensory, sensory activity in the supreme, engage in Krishna consciousness. That sort of determination is in the mode of goodness. Okay. The word avyabhicharyani is very significant. It indicates that person who are engaged in Krishna consciousness and never deviated by any other activity. So for us, in practically, what kind of determination we should have? Uh, I will always attend Mangla Arati. I will never fail to wake up, fail to attend Mangla Arati. Never fail to attend Mangla Arati. I always attend Mangla Arati. Strictly follow regulatory principle, no meditating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication. Okay, you require determination for that. It's not simple but not easy. Okay, I daily read Bhagavad Gita, I daily hear Bhagavad Gita practice for 30 minutes. I'll, I'll just do some render some service to Krishna. That is one thing. What is next? Yeah, I'll eat only Krishna Prasad. So for all these things, we need determination. People will oppose when you practice Krishna consciousness. So stand against them. Stand not against in front of them. You need strong determination with conviction. Determination. To do determination. To do all these things, you need determination. To do all these things is in the mode of goodness. Okay. In the next verse, Krishna says, Yeya tu dharma ka marthan, trutaya dharyate arjuna, prasange na phala kangshi, truti sa partha rajasi. To bol rahe. But that determination by which one hold fast to fruitive result in religion, economic development, and sense gratification is of the nature of patience. So you might have seen in the outside world, people are so much determined to do 
सो मच हरकुलन टास्क और एडवेंचर एडवेंचरस एक्टिविटी द क्रिकेटर दे वेक अप अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग दे रन नो 5 टू 10 राउंड आई रिमेंबर व्हेन आई वाज इन आई वेंट टू सी क्रिकेट मैच अर्लीयर आई शो युवराज सिंह रन 10 राउंड द क्रिकेट राउंड दे आर सो मच डिटरमाइंड ओके दे डोंट स्लीप actor actress they work so hard they don't even sleep properly only few hours of sleep they take pill they do all these things in determination when we have seen many people do fasting to achieve some economical development or to pass some resolution from government and all so all this is not possible without determination so if the determination which is for gaining material profit then their kind of determination is called in mode of patience now in next verse krishna define jaya swapnam bhayam sokam visadam madam evacha na vimuchati durmeda tuti sa partha tamasi is at and that determination which cannot go beyond dreaming fearfulness lamentation moroshness illusion such intelligent determination unintelligent determination no son of partha is in the mode of darkness very simple to understand so let's say purport is very clear it should be should not be concluded it should not be concluded that person in the mode of goodness does not dream a dream means too much sleep dream is always present either in the mode of goodness passion or ignorance dream is natural occurrence but those who cannot avoid oversleeping who cannot avoid pride of enjoying material object who are always dreaming of loading it over material world whose life mind and senses are thus engaged are considered to have determination in the mode of ignorance so till now krishna has defined no action in do work okay then intelligent in three modes now he has defined determination in three mode okay so now in now upcoming few verses krishna defined happiness in three different modes so he says sukham tva ni sukham tva idanim tri vidham shrunu me bharat sarsabha abhyasad ramate yatra दुखांतम च निगछति तो बोलते हैं वो बेस्ट ऑफ द भारत एंड ऑफ दिस हियर फ्रॉम मी अबाउट द थ्री काइंड ऑफ हैप्पीनेस बाय व्हिच कंडीशंस ऑफ एंजॉय एंड बाय व्हिच इज समटाइम कम टू द एंड ऑफ ऑल डिस्ट्रेस ओके सो कंडीशन सोल ट्राइज टू एंजॉय मटेरियल हैप्पीनेस अगेन एंड अगेन द सी च्यू एंड च्यूड च्यू द च्यूड but sometime in the course of such enjoyment he becomes relieved from material entanglement by association with the great soul in other words the conditioned soul is always engaged in some type of sense gratification but when he understand by good association that it is only a repetition of the same thing he is awakened in it, to his real consciousness he is sometime from such a repetitive so called happiness you know krishna is defining happiness in three different mode so he says yatad agre visam eva pariname amruto upamam tat sukham satvikam proktam atma buddhi prasadajam to bol rahe hai that which in the beginning may be just like poison but at the end is just like nectar which awakens one to self realization is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness so when you want to practice spirituality you have to wake up early in the morning 4 o'clock even may be cold okay you have to follow regulatory principle it seems so miserable are kaise and so much uh, sense gratificatory objects are available even every st- step of your walk how you know there is always tendency to get the happiness through lo- the sense gratification but still you know we control them okay so 
so this kind of happiness in the beginning like you know in the spiritual activity in the beginning we find it's very difficult just like a child doesn't want to go school mother beats i remember my mother has beaten me so many times i feel grateful to her that he trained me he brought me on the right track in the beginning i was like a kesi maa hai main aisa soch raha tha was like a poison for me in the beginning but now i'm feeling grateful i'm feeling that yes it's good what she did okay same way and we have to add one more thing here spiritual realization self realization there it is and then what your happiness will get that is called in the mode of goodness okay in pursuit of self realization one has to follow many rules and regulation to control the mind and the senses and to concentrate the mind on the self all these procedure are very difficult bitter like a poison but if one is successful in the following the rules following the regulation and comes to transcendental position he begin to drink he begins to drink real nectar and he enjoys life very simple so in the next word krishna says we say indra sai yogad yat tad agre amruto pamam parinamme visam eva tad sukham rajasam sprutam bolte that happiness which is derived from contact of sense with their object in which appears like a nectar at first the poison at the end is said to be of the nature of poison young man and young, young woman and, and sense meet and sense sorry a young man and a young, a young woman meet and sense drive the young man to see her to touch her do a sexual intercourse i don't know how many of you have experience but i have experience of seeing before i came to krishna consciousness with bad intention yeah okay yeah. since so the beginning they may be very pleasing to senses we are feeling very good ah, so nice but at the end or after some time when you know what too much it's very difficult to come out you will not get real happiness okay it becomes just like a poison so in the beginning very nice but end very poison that's proof of the explain they are separated or there is a divorce there is a lamentation there is sorrow it is such happiness is always in the mode of passion happiness derived from combination of sense and sense object is always cause of distress and should be avoided by all means okay so we have understood that dear like to hear the music so when it hears it will be attracted by it because of hearing that music it will be trapped so by the sense of hearing dear will be trapped similarly that moth or firefly always like to go near fire so seeing so when it tries to go more closer it will be burn out fish trapped by tongue eating so by seeing that uh, eatable object hooked in some needle and it tries to eat you know, stuck in the throat and fish will die elephant so much just seeing a female elephant it become mad it trapped trapped okay. so which one sense one more sense is left touch a gaya hearing a gaya listening are there so all five senses have, are already there smell so smell ka example is the example of the smell i forgot that whatever so even this animal have only one sense very active very nice active and they are getting trapped but for human being all senses are very very active now imagine how much careful we should be in smell who can be trapped yeah that uh, bumblebee sorry honey bee because of smell it get trapped but our all senses are very very active so that's why it is said in bhagavad gita 2.67 even one roaming sense can 
take away the intelligence of learned person, carried away this. Okay. That's why we should be very careful, very thoughtful, no? that our sense and sense object will not meet. It's regulated, very dangerous. In the next verse, Krishna says, so basically we discuss this, happiness in the mode of fashion. Now Krishna discuss here, happiness in the mode of ignorance. So Bunta, yad agrecha anubandecha sukham mohanam atmanam nidralayasya pramad uttam tatatamasam dharatam to bol raha hai. And that happiness which is blind to self-realization, which is delusion from beginning to end, which is arise from sleep, laziness, illusion is said to be of the nature of ignorance. So basically in this scenario, first, happiness in the mode of goodness, poison in the beginning, nectar in the end, happiness in the mode of passion, uh, nectar in the beginning, poison at the end. But here, Poison at the beginning, poison at the end, and which arise from sleep, laziness, illusion is said to be nature of which has no concept of self realization. That kind of happiness, many people get you know, happiness in sleeping. I remember I was going to preach in IIT Bombay. So one person used to like sleep, and you know, he used to wake up, he used to tell student you should be good in studies. Student, so, Bola Pruja, Sona, the Mujer Zambi, and I said, The grand happiness from sleeping, he slept 14 hours on the day, 16 hours. Sorry. Okay. So, that is what you know, one who takes pleasure in laziness, in sleep, in certainly in the mode of darkness, ignorance. The one who has no idea how to act, how not to act, is also in the mode of ignorance. Okay. For the person in the mode of ignorance, everything is illusion. There is no happiness either in the beginning or at the end. For the person in the mode of passion, there might be some kind of ephemeral happiness in the beginning at the end, distress. But for a person in the mode of ignorance, there is only distress, both in the beginning and at the end. So in the next verse, Krishna says, Matad asti va. Divi Devi Suvapuna Satvam Prakrutir Prakruti Chir Muktam Yadebi Syatri Birgune to Batare. There is no being existing either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary system which is freed from the sense from these three modes of three modes born of material nature. I'm reading again. There is no being existing either here. Or among the demigods in the higher planetary system, which is spread from these three modes born of material nature. Brahma is like Brahma is okay, may have good no, some more level of mode of goodness. He has also mode of passion. Okay. So all are under the three modes of material nature. So basically, the Lord here summarized the all over the universe, no one is free from the influence of modes of material nature. Now, then who can be free? How can we be free? So that is explained in the next section, next upcoming verses. So tomorrow we'll discuss from verse number 41 to 66, how to be free from the three modes of material nature. And that will be the conclusion of the book. Okay, so tomorrow we will discuss another 26 verses and remaining 12 verses we will discuss and day after tomorrow. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna.